Hey friends, welcome back to your pre-holiday edition of Hot News. Hope you're gonna be enjoying the holidays this week with your friends, your family, or by yourself in your basement just because you wanna play video games in peace and quiet while everybody else is scattered abroad. That's what I'm gonna be doing. And you can do that in style if you decor your room with some disc plates. Yes, my friends, our sponsor for today is Displate. If you go to displate.com forward slash UFD tech official, you can pick up some really amazing metal prints that mount on your wall with magnets so they're super easy to put up up, in case you screw it up, it's at a crooked angle. Well, it's on a magnet, so you just rotate it, my friend. Bam, there you go. You get sexy ones like these Final Fantasy posters we have behind me, or anything else that might suit your taste and style. Let's say you're a minimalist artist, or you like, you know, retro movies. They have stuff for you all over there on displate.com forward slash UFD Tech Official. Use the link in the video description, pick one up, use the sale coupon codes that they have, save money, they plant trees. It's amazing, buy them. But speaking of buying stuff, you should totally, in case you're in the market for a processor, buy this AMD Ryzen 5 1600 over on Amazon right now if you're at all looking to get a cheap six core 12 thread processor because while this may look like a Ryzen 5 1600, it appears that AMD has bamboozled us and they are shipping these things out that in more like a Ryzen 5 2600 scenario because these very specific Ryzen 5s that are out on the market with the code name YD1600BBAF box instead of AE box are actually manufactured on the 12 nanometer process, which is the exact same as Zen Plus or on the Ryzen 5 2000 series chips. And for people who have actually picked one of these up, they have found that this is indeed significantly faster than the Ryzen 5 1600, but not quite a Ryzen 5 2600, so a 2600 Lite. But considering that the price that it's currently going for on Amazon is $85, that is remarkably cheap. You're getting so much bang for your buck for this. A 2600 Lite for $85 is a phenomenal value, and it looks like AMD is doing this for who knows what reason. It could be that they're phasing out the 14 nanometer process and they're trying to consolidate everything to the 12 nanometer process, but they don't wanna drop the original Ryzen because people view the Ryzen 5 1600 as the super entry level one, but it's actually more cost effective for them to give them better chips by just giving people bin 2600s that couldn't quite make the cut, which is apparently what is going on with this 1600. It doesn't have as good overclocking or memory overclocking potential, but all things being said, it's better than a regular Ryzen 5 1600. So if you've been holding off at all and you've been waiting to pick up a new Ryzen chip, this may be the one to get. This Ryzen 5 1600, you have to make sure it says AF and not AE. The AE is the regular 14 nanometer. The AF, Ryzen AF chip, is the new one that is slightly faster than its normal one. So if you wanna pick that up, we have an Amazon affiliate link in our video description. Apparently Micro Center is also selling these for around $80, but you'd have to check again in person to make sure that it says Ryzen AF. But another product that AMD might be launching soon is the Radeon RX 5600 XT. There are now leaked benchmarks as well as filings going on for this graphics card that are out there. It looks like it might come with six or eight gigabytes of VRAM and be about 30 to 35% faster than one of these, the 5500 XT, which just launched to less than stellar fanfare, $200 for something that we've been getting for the past several years. It's okay. The 5600 XT though looks to be a stellar replacement for the Vega 56. And as long as it comes in at a decent price bracket will be a worthwhile pickup. It looks like AMD might be announcing these over at CES when that launches in a couple weeks. But on top of that, there's also been leaked benchmarks and filings for an eight core 16 thread APU from AMD based on their Renoir architecture, which is Zen 2 CPU plus VEG graphics smushed together. And it looks like these will be coming to mobile, which would put a lot of pressure over on Intel, considering that they've held the mobile crown for so long, bringing Zen 2 chips to a Ryzen 7 4800H or a 4700U could mean that Intel's grasp on the gaming laptop market might go away very much like how they've lost the grasp on the desktop gaming market in the past few months. So that could be happening sometime soon. Again, this is another announcement that we're expecting from AMD at CES for these eight core 16 thread APUs going into the mobile variants. 
But Intel not wanting to take anything lying down, they have decided to hire yet another AMD executive. Somebody who's worked at AMD for 15 plus years is now transferring over as the vice president discrete GPU SOC and will work under Intel's graphics and throughput computing hardware engineering group, which is headed by former AMD member Rajika Dori. So I really have a hard time keeping track, but Intel has poached so many people from AMD's GPU division. It's not even funny at this point and very clearly looks like a hiring strategy of theirs. Who are the successful people at AMD. Let's go ahead and steal them for our side. But one of the things that Intel couldn't succeed at was producing 5G modems. This was a big debacle that happened a few months ago with Apple and Intel fighting over producing 5G modems and Apple then making good with Qualcomm so that they could actually produce 5G modems. And then Apple finally buying out Intel for their 5G modems, which Apple said when they purchased that part of Intel's business was that they were gonna keep one of the three offices that they had in Germany afloat. Apple said that they were gonna keep the one in Munich afloat, but the other two offices were potentially gonna be shuttered and that is officially happening with around 450 people getting to lose their jobs at this point. It sucks. But let's transfer over into something that sucks a little less for the environment, and that is apparently Tesla uh, has code in the Tesla Model 3s that could indicate that they could go up to a 100 kilowatt hour battery, as well as gain a ludicrous mode, two things that are sorely lacking from the Model 3, although for a fifty dollars to $60,000 car, the Tesla Model 3 Performance Edition, having a zero to 60 in around three seconds, isn't really a whole lot to sneeze at, but getting that extra ludicrous mode to put it near 2.5 would would bring it in class of the Tesla Model S, but obviously for a price increase. The big thing that I think a lot of people want, even if it's not the extra speed of the ludicrous mode, would be that 100 kilowatt hour battery, because that would mean that they'd be able to get around 420 miles of range, which is one of Elon Musk's favorite number, and would be a huge upgrade from the current 322, which is the highest of the currently available Tesla Model 3s on the long range all wheel drive. So these are things that are pretty exciting. However, there is some indication that the code while it is in the Tesla Model 3's code setup, it could just be legacy code from the Tesla Model S and X and that it will eventually be removed and it's just vestigial at this point. Speaking of vestigial, Michael Bay movies. Yes, my friends, the new Michael Bay movie, Six Underground, is now available on Netflix. The only reason I'm talking about this is because in my research for Hot News Today, I saw this title for an article which said, Netflix's Six Underground is Chocobo Racing without the Final Fantasy, and that means I now have to watch it. Thank you, Michael Bay. I really appreciate you. And Motorola appreciates every single one of you who's super interested in the Motorola Razor, which is the foldable clamshell phone that they announced, which is supposed to be harkening back to one of the most successful phones that they've ever had, which was the previous Razor. I'm not so sold on it, but apparently Motorola is saying that there was unprecedented amount of interest from their consumers. And because demand has been high, they it's quickly outgrown their supply prediction. So Motorola has decided to adjust Razer's pre-sale and launch timing to better meet consumer demand, and they don't have a date for that yet. It was apparently supposed to go on pre-order December 26th, the day after Christmas, and then be available for shipping January 9th, but now they've moved those dates to indefinite, which, if I had to guess, means that they never actually were planning on shipping these, at least from my perspective, the way I would view this is that they were expecting a few people to be interested in their $1,500 phone. And then when they had to inevitably shift the supply dates on these phones, it would only upset a few people. But apparently thousands of you are ridiculous enough to spend $1,500 on a phone you had decades ago. Well, they are gonna piss off a whole lot of people if they don't meet their actual supply dates. So they have to shutter it. Because typically, you know, selling out of a phone because it's so popular is actually a really good thing. There's no reason to push back production if you're gonna sell out of a phone. Apple does this all the time. Other phone manufacturers do this all of the time. Why is Motorola shying away from selling out? Well, it's because they weren't gonna be able to make delivery on it. That's my hypothesis, my conjecture. But you know what I don't have to conjecture about? Cats. It's a terrible movie. And some would have it, it's a terrible musical. How dare you? I know my editor, Catlin, right now is freaking out that I said that, but them's the facts on the internet. Some people really hate Cats as a musical. Your opinion is a 
invalid. And basically everybody hates it as a movie. $95 million budget made way less than that at the box office this past week because it's just an atrocious movie. But on top of that, the VFX in the movie were also just crap awful. They were disgusting. With their patches of skin missing on cats. They were clipping through walls. There were people who were just normal people in the background that they didn't CG out. It was a, just a, a nightmare. Well, Universal has decided to take the video game approach and to patch it after launch. Yes, my friends, we're getting a day four patch, day five patch. I don't care when it came out. Anyways, they're going to be patching it in the movie theater to fix VFX issues that were already in the movie. Obviously, this isn't gonna improve the movie whatsoever. It's just gonna mean that cat's tails aren't glitching or it's gonna fix the fact that Judy Dench's cat hand turns into a human hand with a wedding ring on it, mind you, and then back into a cat hand. It's gonna fix all of that, but uh, it's still gonna be a garbage movie. Unfortunately, because Universal has decided that this is a digital release only movie and it's not actually on film, you're not gonna be able to one day find those mythical uh, original cat cuts out on the eBay to have it for your home theater where you like to watch original versions of garbage cinematic movies. No, my friends, this is gone forever. Judy Dench's wedding ring, forever lost in the annals of history just like this episode of Hot News, because I'm going to end it there. Thank you all so much for watching this episode. Let me know what was your favorite part. Have you seen Gats? Did you like it? You probably didn't. Let me know down below in the comments. Anyways, don't forget to check out our sponsor, Display, Displate.com forward slash UFD Tech Official. Get dope metal prints that look magnificent on your wall, and we'll make your basement dwelling holiday season a bit more amazing. I was going to say festive, but that that's up to you. Sephiroth's not exactly festive. He's just Sephiroth. I'm going to stop rambling. Thank you so much. See you guys next time. Bye. No!